I have been promising to make a video of my all-time favorite romance novels for a really long time, and I have been putting it off because that is quite the undertaking. I read over 300 books a year, and I love, I fall in love with a lot of books because I'm really, really good at picking out books that I know I'll love. So the books that I tend to read, I tend to love. And that means that I have a lot of books that I'm obsessed with, and it's really, really hard to narrow that list down to one that I can actually put in the video. And I kept trying to tell myself, well, I can just say in the video, these are some of them. I just have this fear that I'm going to forget one, and then I'm going to be like, oh my god, how could I not include that book on this list? So instead, and I will do that, I think it might be an end of the year type of video. Also... I'm a really big procrastinator, but we'll see. And then I was thinking, okay, well, maybe I'll just do my favorite books that are on my bookshelf, like physical copies that I own. And I'm like, that's such a cop out. So I'm going to do it, but it's not this video. <laughs> so instead what I did was, and this was pretty hard too, to narrow down this list, but I wanted to come up with a list of like tropes and things in romance books that define my taste in romance books, and then give you an example of a book that fits that trope or several tropes. So these aren't necessarily my all-time favorite books, but they have my all-time favorite tropes in them. And some of them will appear on my all-time favorite list, I'm sure, but not all of them because I wanted this video to be somewhat different from that video. And this video obviously will be a lot shorter because I was able to find some books that had several tropes or things in books that I love. This and then the next one are probably my top two things that I love in romance books, and that is a cinnamon roll hero. Cinnamon roll heroes are my absolute favorite. I love sweet heroes. Maybe it's because I've been reading books for a really long time, for many, many years, and I was reading books when the alpha hero was super, super popular. Everyone loved alpha hero. Every book had an alpha hero. Every popular book had an alpha, alpha hero, I should say. And I just got so burnt out on the alpha heroes. When I first started reading romance, my very first adult romance book was a paranormal adult romance book. So I dove headfirst into paranormal adult romance. And just by the nature of those, you have a lot of alpha heroes in those. You don't tend to have too many cinnamon roll heroes. So I think me being obsessed with cinnamon roll heroes right now is kind of a retaliation of reading way too many alpha heroes. <laughs> in the past. If you're unfamiliar with what a cinnamon roll hero is, because there have been people who have asked me what cinnamon roll heroes are, they're just sweet heroes. Like cinnamon rolls are very sweet, sweet heroes. So just super, super sweet heroes. A lot of times they're submissive, golden retriever heroes, like all of that. I love those types of heroes who are just so, so sweet and so good to the heroine, especially, I especially love that when the heroine had a really rough life before she meets the hero. And then she finally meets a hero who really wants to take care of her and love her and be just sweet and good to her. So a great example of a cinnamon roll hero is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This is a closed door romance, FYI, but I'm telling you, you don't even notice because the chemistry between this couple is so good. This is also another trope in this is like two different worlds, which part of your world, get it? But like a hero and a heroine from two totally different worlds. She's from like big city. She's a big city surgeon and very, very smart, very, you know, work minded and fast paced living and everything. And he is small town and has lived in the small town his entire life and very sweet and everything. But then their two worlds kind of collide and it is fire immediately. And it's just so good. And this book, and I've, I, I tell this story every time I talk about this book, this book actually made me cry, not because it was sad necessarily. I mean, it was a little bit sad, I guess, but because the romance was just so heartbreakingly beautiful. And I, I like never cry when I read romance novels and I read a lot of emotional romance novels, but I absolutely fell in love with this book, has the ultimate cinnamon roll hero. The audiobook is also really good for this one. I love this one. Cinnamon roll heroes, definitely my number one. And a close second, if not a tie for first, is a virgin hero. I love virgin heroes. I've tried to think about what it is that I love about Virgin Heroes. And I think it's along the same lines of a cin cinnamon roll hero. And also because I feel like we got in the alpha hero heyday, which I, there are still a ton of alpha heroes. Alpha heroes also tend to be playboys too. And they sleep around a lot. And I just was craving the exact opposite. And you can't get more opposite of a playboy hero than a virgin hero, which I feel like sometimes, unfortunately, because society says so, it's less and less likely that you'll get a virgin hero in an adult romance, because how do you explain why they're a virgin, I guess? You know, men are basically told, hey, you can sleep around a lot, while women are like, hey, if you sleep with more than one guy, then you're a whore. It's not fair. There's a lot of commentary 
could have on that. But I really like a lot of the reasons that these authors come up with that heroes are virgins. I like a hero who worships the ground that the heroine walks on. And a lot of times when you get a virgin hero, he's choosing to sleep with this woman. And it's the first time he's ever chosen to sleep with a woman. So obviously she means a lot to him. So there's that part of it too. And also there's a sense of wonder too, when he's like experiencing it for the first time. And an example of a virgin hero romance novel that I fell in love with was The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This book was so, 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 so good. And it really mostly had to do with the hero in this. Another thing that I love in romance novels is when you get neurodivergence rep. And the hero in this is neurodiverse. He has autism. That's partially why he's never slept with anyone because he feels like he can't fall in love because that's kind of what he's been told his entire life, essentially. He doesn't express his feelings the same way as other people. And therefore, to him, that equates he can't fall in love. That is until he meets the heroine. And this is a marriage of convenience situation. It's a arranged marriage situation. Also, this is an Asian author who wrote it with Asian characters. So I love that. That's another thing that I love in romance novels. So this book has a lot going for it that I really love. Another thing that I love in romance novels is marriage of convenience. I love a good marriage of convenience, especially in a contemporary romance. I feel like it's easier to pull off in a historical romance. I love seeing how romance authors figure out how to have a marriage of convenience within a contemporary romance because it's a little bit harder to pull off. But one book that does pull it off and does it really, really well is With You Forever by Chloe Lee. This is actually the fourth book in the Bergman Brothers series. You do not have to read the series in order. You can read them as standalones, but let me tell you, the entire series is perfection. There's even a book that has a virgin hero in it. There's enemies lovers. There's so many tropes in the series. And there's a ton of chronic illness and disability rep in it. And this book in particular has a chronic illness rep. I love also chronic illness rep in romance novels. I have a chronic illness, so I love seeing it. The author, Chloe Lee, is neurodiverse. She also has a chronic illness. I love authors who really take the time and sensitivity to write about chronic illness in a romance, but not have that be the main plot point. Like her books have characters who have chronic illnesses and neurodivergence and disability, but that's not like the main plot point. It, they just are characters who live with these things but you're mostly watching the romance and then fall in love and it's not a huge plot point. I love that in romance novels. This book has it all. It's so good. Axel is one of my all-time favorite heroes. He's another cinnamon roll hero and I just absolutely adore it. Sorry, I had to fix the lighting really quick. Like, lighting got weird. Anyway, this next book has so many things that I love in it. So we have weird slash alien slash monster romances. That is so my thing that defines my taste in romance novels lately. Also, this has a grumpy hero slash grumpy hero with a heart, which can be two totally different things. Like sometimes you just have a straight up grumpy hero, but this one has a grumpy hero with a heart. He's also a grumpy and reluctant hero. I love reluctant heroes. A lot of times reluctant heroes are grumpy. And what I mean by reluctant is that they don't want to fall in love. Like they are trying everything they can not to fall in love with the heroine. And that is absolutely what's happening in this book. And also rom-coms. I love rom-coms so much. I love a good emotional novel, but I also love rom-coms. And I also am such a huge fan, you guys know, of slow burn romances. I love slow burn so much more than insta-love. Not saying that I don't love insta-love. It's just that insta-love is very, very hard to pull off. Slow burn kind of is too. But the thing I love about slow burn novels is the tension. Oh my gosh, the tension is just ratcheted up so high when you have to wait for even a touch or a kiss. So every little interaction means so much in a slow burn romance. And this book has it all. And that is The Quarry Master by Amanda Milo. Amanda Milo also happens to be one of my all-time favorite people slash authors. She's freaking hilarious. Her books are hilarious. She tends to write mostly alien romances, and that's what this is. Alien slash monster romances. This species of alien is kind of like a dragon, I guess. And this is a spinoff of her Stolen by Alien series, which is also a really great series, by the way. But in this particular one, the heroine is also disabled. Love a disabled character. She's working for the hero, who's the alien, on his planet, her and a bunch of human women. And the human women all tend to complain quite a bit because they're doing manual labor, but she is the only one of all the humans that doesn't really complain. She just like goes hard at her job. She always has a smile on her face. He is the exact opposite, but he can't help but notice her. He's annoyed by every other single human except for her. This is also an I hate everyone but you hero, which is another thing I love in romance novels. And it's so freaking good. And it's so funny and so slow burn and so swoony. And the reluctant hero part in this is just fantastic because he has a tail 
and his tail wags when he's happy. But he doesn't like to show that he's happy, so he's always stomping on his tail trying to get it to stop. <laughs> it's just fantastic. Another thing that I absolutely love in romance novels is epic romance in specifically contemporary romance novels. Similar to Marriage of Convenience, I feel as though epic romances are harder to pull off in contemporary romances because there's no like magic or end of the world kind of thing that's bringing these two characters together and no like epic star cross lover type thing that's bringing two people together. So it's a little bit harder to pull off the epic romance in a contemporary, but this next book does it. It's also a forbidden romance, which I also really love. This too has chronic illness rep, beautiful writing. I always appreciate beautiful, beautiful writing. And it also has fantastic audiobook to accompany it. I read this book both physically and via audio and both versions were fantastic, but I highly, highly recommend the audiobook for this one. It's so good. I always appreciate a really good romance audio. This one is also extremely emotional. Like I said before, I love a good emotional romance romance one that will tear your heart out. The characters go through it. I don't mind in romances when characters are put through the ringer as long as two things happen. Well, if it's a romance, it has to have an HEA. I feel safe reading an emotional romance because I know at the end they are going to be happy together. And the other thing is that the emotional part and the the horrible things that the characters go through is not gratuitous and not for no reason. Like there has to be a reason why they're going through all of this. It can't just be like just to make you cry. Like that can't be the author's only goal. I want the author to have a purpose when they have these like horrible and emotional things that these characters go through. And also relatability. Something else that kind of defines my taste is something that I can relate to in a book. And this book had such a huge thing that I related to in the chronic illness, even though the character had a different chronic illness than me. And that is Real by Kennedy Ryan. This book checks so many of my boxes for all of those reasons. Like I said, this is a forbidden romance. It's a romance, oh, this also has a Broadway singer. I love Broadway too. That doesn't like define my taste, but that's another thing that I happen to love. But the heroine is a Broadway singer turned actress. The hero is casting for this movie, a biopic movie that is very, very important to him. And she is the perfect person for it. So she's going from stage to screen, which is a really, really big deal for her. And the forbidden part comes into play because he is going to be her boss. He also has had a relationship in the past that did not go well with an actress. So he's very much like, I am not going to get in this relationship. It's so beautiful. It is beautiful. It is a stunning, stunning book. I get a lot of messages on Instagram of people asking me to make recommendations for books to them. And I almost always recommend Real by Kennedy Ryan. Like that is my go-to. So just so you know, if you want me to personally recommend a book to you, it will be Real by Kennedy Ryan. Okay, so this next one you may want to skip over because it's a little bit of a spoiler. And this is one of my all-time favorite things that happen in romance novels. It very, very rarely happens. Very rarely. I can almost never find a book. I think I know of like three books that do this and do this well. And that is a bait and switch love interest. And what I mean by that, what I mean by bait and switch love interest is that you think that the main character is going to end up with one person and they're with that person or about to, or like developing this relationship with this person for a good portion of the book, but there's this other person who's in the background who you either, either think is the antagonist or just, you know, someone, a throwaway person or whatever, like you and the character think that, but then all of a sudden it switches and that person in the background becomes a love interest. I love that so freaking much. I feel like this is something that not a lot of people talk about. And even if someone were to do a video of a bait and switch love interest, I wouldn't watch a video because it wouldn't want to be spoiled. Like I like when it comes out of left field and I have no idea it's about to happen. Anyway, the book is Rosalind Palmer Takes the Cake by Alexis Hall. Also, I should almost say a defining trait of my romance reading habits is basically Alexis Hall. Like Alexis Hall would be another, <laughs> another thing that defines my, my taste in romance. Anyway, I loved this book so freaking much. It has the bait and switch love interest that took me 100% by, by surprise. So this is based around a baking show. The heroine is kind of like at home chef type of thing. And she really needs the money to pay for rent and stuff. So she enters this contest and yeah, so it has like the, a reality show kind of vibe, but I didn't mind it at all. Like normally I don't like that, but I didn't mind it at all in this book because it had so many other things that I love about it, including it being written by Alexis Hall. So the humor was fantastic. Another thing that defines my taste is 
And I don't know necessarily how to put this in like a succinct way, but a why am I okay with this <laughs> kind of thing. Like a book that you're reading that is so messed up in some way and you're just like, why am I okay with this? Like, why am I okay with this romance when it's so messed up? And I also love really good morally gray characters. So a great example of both of those things is the Darkly Madly Duet by Trisha Wolf because this is a serial killer romance. This also is an epic forbidden romance as well because it is a criminal psychologist and a serial killer. And it is a duet. You really have to read both of the books to get the full experience. But it is absolutely one of those things where the entire time I was like, why am I okay with this? What's wrong with me? It made me question a lot of things about my taste in books, but that is a defining trait. So another thing that I have found that I obsess over when it comes to romance novels is when heroes have that moment of what is this feeling in my chest? Oh, it's love. Like, <laughs> I love when that happens in romance novels. It's one of my all-time favorite things and it usually really only happens in sometimes monster romances that can happen too, but mostly it's when it's with a psychopath hero. Like the hero is either doesn't think he can love, has never loved before for whatever reason, usually it's a nefarious reason, but then all of a sudden they're with a heroine or another person for a long time and they start to like feel this feeling in their chest and they're like, am I having a heart attack? Do I have heartburn? And then later they're like, oh, I'm falling in love. And I just love that. And a great example of that is in Run, Posey, Run by Kate C. Wells. Again, this is a psychopath romance. This was also another book that I'm like, why am I okay with this? But I just love this book so much and specifically that part of it. Something else that I absolutely adore in romance novels is a not your typical badass heroine. So you can have a badass heroine who is maybe a loud mouth and very strong willed and like very extroverted and externally badass. But I tend to prefer the heroines who are badasses just because of their maybe their inner strength and it's not necessarily their physical strength or there's just something that's so strong within them like they have a lot of challenges thrown at them but they handle it with grace or even if sometimes they mess up they still manage to like gather themselves back up i love those type of badass heroines and i also love books that have amazing meet cutes in fact i have an entire video talking about books that have my favorite meet cutes in them this book has both of those things. It is the third book in a series. You don't have to read the books in order, but the entire series is amazing. It's one of my all-time favorites. And it is With Her Own Two Hands by Tasha L. Harrison. The heroine in this one is bipolar. She also has a little bit of an affinity for magic. This entire series has like a touch, a touch of magic in it. It follows these three sisters, which is another defining trait. I love sister romances because I have two sisters of my own. Sorry, she has two sisters. And it it's each of the sisters' love stories. Is dealing with bipolar disorder and depression and it's it's on page you see her really really struggle but she always claws herself back and it also has a fantastic meet cute because she is also an empath which is very very relatable and what's hilarious is she goes to yoga a lot because that's another way that she kind of takes care of herself takes care of her mental health awesome badass thing and there's this guy who is emanating this kind of negative energy and as an empath it's like bothering her because he's going to her yoga class her yoga class it's a group class and she is just like fed up up with this negative energy that this dude is putting off and so she walks up to him while he's like laying and meditating and she like puts a crystal on his head and she's like that'll help and I just thought that was one of the best meet cutes of all time and then last but not least I absolutely am obsessed with a hero who does not think that he is good enough for the heroine and that's why he's staying away from her, even though he's absolutely obsessively in love with her. And that happens beautifully and perfectly in Mercy by Deborah Anastasia. I am obsessed with this book. The entire series is very fun, although I have not yet listened to the last book in the series. But the first two books are really, really good. This one especially I'm so, so in love with. This is a dark romance, but if I were to recommend, like if you are just stepping your toe into dark romance, this is a great place to start because there's a little bit of rom-com energy in this as well. Like there's some humor in it. It's also a stalker romance. It is so freaking good, but I think my favorite, favorite part of it is the fact that he does not think he's good enough for the heroine and he has worshiped the ground she walks on for basically her entire life because they did meet as children. So it is such a freaking good book and it has defining traits of things that I love in romance novels. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know down below what some of your favorite things that you love in romance novels are and book examples of those. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, happy reading. Bye.